All right, if you're thinking about a whole home backup generator and trying to figure out what it's gonna cost, this video is for you. As you saw in the thumbnail, they can be as low as 10,500, uh, but you can pay twice as much at 21,000. So we've got a bunch of data. We're gonna take a look at the cost of the generator itself, the installation, DIY savings. So let's get into it. Okay, all of this data came from when we got our own generator installed on our property. You can see it here, it's a Kohler 38 kilowatt, 1800 RPM generator. It's propane fueled by that 1000 gallon propane tank. And coming out of the generator, it goes and connects over into the disconnect switch. You can see there on the service entrance panel by our two meters. Uh, all of that is grid tied as you can see up there. All right, for the rest of this video, we're gonna be building out this table of costs. You can see column B is the most inexpensive version. You can really do a whole home backup generator. Ours is this middle column. So this is the one that I just showed you in the video. Twice as much, there's a good reasons for it. So we'll get into kind of why that happens. And then the last column is the sort of most expensive way you can install a generator. Uh, if it's a little bit bigger than ours and you didn't get any savings. So the kind of core elements that I mentioned, the gen set, that's the engine plus the generator head. You can kind of think of when you see the big box, uh, the thing that goes on the concrete pad, that's the gen set. The transfer switch, like you saw in the video, will probably go near uh, your service entrance by your meters. The installation, we're gonna take a look at the quotes we got from the electrician that installed this and reverse engineer what portion of it was the cost of the generator and the hardware versus the labor and installation. Then the last part is the savings we got from doing a little bit of work ourselves. Obviously with a generator, it's uh, yeah, there's not much you can do yourself from a DIY standpoint, but there was a few things that saved us a couple thousand bucks. All right, so looking at the cost of the generator itself, in this table, I've compiled a bunch of data from online retailers and sort of normalized it for inflation. So the costs that you see are accurate according to about three years ago when we bought ours. So these will match the numbers we paid and it kind of reflects the choices we could have made. But if you are looking to buy one today, I could probably expect about 10 to 20% more from what you're gonna see here. So the, the first thing, as you would expect, the main driver for the cost is its size. Uh, basically, how big is it as measured in output power? So column A that we can see here, kind of going down, uh, it's getting bigger, right? So 10 kilowatts is a starting point. Uh, that's a kind of about the smallest. You can get a, a, a standby generator all the way down to 48 kilowatts at the bottom. So uh, just kind of looking at that, comparing it to column B, you can see, you know, the numbers also get bigger. So the bigger the generator, uh, the, the more it costs. Uh, there's uh, one thing you're probably noticing already. What is the difference between the red and the blue? That's the second dimension that'll really make the difference with how much your generator is going to cost. It's basically whether it's uh, in these red ones, these are air cooled uh, 3600 RPM generators. So that's kind of a certain uh, class of generator that you can get. The second ones in blue are liquid cooled and they run at 1800 RPMs. So the thing you may not know about a generator is it always runs at the same speed. Uh, they don't throttle based on load. Like you think about a car pressing on the gas pedal. Uh, they have to run at the same speed all the time because that's uh, how it creates a, a, a 60 hertz frequency that your appliances know and love. So it doesn't matter whether it's, uh, let's say you have this 24 kilowatt generator, uh, if it's generating one kilowatt or 24 kilowatts, it's always running at 1800 RPMs. Uh, same is true for 3600 RPM. So looking at column C, we can see that right between the red and the blue, the price jumps a lot. So this column C of basically uh, calling it dollars per kilowatt. So in that case, how much is it costing for every, additional kilowatt that you want. And we can see the jump right there between the air cooled and the liquid cooled. Essentially the liquid cooled is just a lot uh, better built, more reliable, and so it costs more per kilowatt once you get into the 1800 RPM class. So to help visualize some of this, I put it into this cool chart. So the other kind of thing to think about as it relates to sizing is that as the generator gets bigger in either of these groups, so in these red ones you can see uh, this chart is uh, basically the size of the generator is going across the bottom. Dollars per kilowatt is still the same column that we're using, column C from before. So 
Essentially, as you would expect, right, there's a lot of things in a generator that are the same for all of them. Uh, but as it gets bigger, its incremental cost to produce one extra kilowatt of power goes down. So as you kind of step up in power, the cost per kilowatt goes down. That's the same as the, the 1800 ones up here. So the, each time you get a little bit bigger, the cost goes down a little bit more dollars per kilowatt. Comparing the right about this line right here, this blue one is 2400 or sorry, 24 kilowatts. This one's 26 kilowatts. So they're pretty comparable, but it's about twice as much just to have a liquid cooled 1800 RPM generator. But once you kind of decide if you're gonna go for the ones in the blue group, then if it gets a little bit bigger, the incremental cost is a little bit lower. Okay, one more thing that's kind of interesting to visualize in this chart, there's not like a, it's not like I'm missing some data. So as you can see, it's not like there's a red dot that should have been out here um, but those aren't there, they don't exist. You really can't get an air-cooled generator bigger than this one here at 26 kilowatts. And similarly, the in the blue category, they really don't get any smaller. So this one is a 24 kilowatt generator. Uh, they don't make them smaller in the 1800 RPM class, probably maybe for the reason I was just describing, right? If it keeps getting smaller, your dollars per kilowatt's just going up. All right, so I've gone back and filled in the values for the gen set on the original table. Those came from this one that we were looking at. So we've got the, uh, we're comparing the numbers with the 20 kilowatt. Obviously it's not quite the cheapest. You could get one a little bit, uh, a little bit cheaper if you went for all the way for the 10 kilowatt option. But anyway, we didn't get a quote for that one. So we're comparing the 20 kilowatt, 38 kilowatts. And if we had gone uh, one step bigger, we would have got the 48 kilowatts. So. Those are the three options that we uh, that we have in the table. So I've gone ahead and filled, filled those in. Okay, next row is the transfer switch. Uh, there's not that much that can affect the cost of the transfer switch. The basic version you can get is a, a 200 amp. Uh, it just kind of switches everything over, either from the meter uh, to the generator. So you're basically 200 amp automatic transfer switch. Uh, those are the cheapest is kind of about 850 for those. That's also the one we got, it was 850. And then uh, if you kind of went for the best one, it would have uh, some load shedding features. You can land branch circuits directly on it, Wi-Fi integration, things like that. Uh, anyway, the kind of more most expensive one I could find, I think it was about 1390. So not a big cost difference there. But that covers uh, basically, so now we've kind of covered lines two and three. That's all of the hardware costs. So now let's take a look at the installation portion. All right, so for installation, these are the two quotes we got from the electricians that actually did the, uh, basically all of the install of the generator itself. So I kind of cleaned them up and put them side by side to help compare a few things. Uh, the text is a little small, so I'm gonna zoom in on this one on the left. So what we can see is that this is the 20 kilowatt option. So they've specified as a 20 kilowatt generator. The first two line items, line one, that's the gen set that we've already accounted for. Line item two is the transfer switch that we've accounted for. And then the grand total they have at the bottom, 10,500. That's also what I've already put in the total for the spreadsheet. So essentially we can just get the spreadsheet to do some simple math and subtract those two numbers from each other. And then we'll arrive at basically the portion of the 10,500 that is all of the labor for the installation. Uh, so that's, uh, I should go back. It's really just these three through seven items. That's essentially the install cost from the electricians. Uh, the part in red, I'll come back to in a second when we talk about the DIY work we did, but basically that's it. So we can do that for these two. Uh, the one on the, this is the quote over here on the right. So same idea. We're gonna be looking at the 38 kilowatt one we actually have installed. 21,300 is the amount that we paid. So we can subtract line items one and two and then we can uh, arrive at the, uh, the installation portion. So let's go back to the spreadsheet and do that now. Okay, so back on our totals uh, spreadsheet here, we'll just let it do the math for us. So like I was just saying, essentially to calculate the installation, we're gonna do, we're gonna take uh, the total and we're gonna subtract the hardware costs. So we'll subtract those two and we can see that the installation cost is just under $5,000. So if we kind of uh, take the same thing and do the math on the, the one we actually had installed, uh, we can see it's about $1,500 more. 
So insulation for the 20 kilowatt in column B is uh, the is just under five, and for the one we had done was 6,500. So you can see why are, where is the extra $1,500 coming from to install the larger generator? Uh, there's a few things that would be costing a little bit more for them. Uh, there's you have to use a bigger wire size, you have to maybe use bigger conduit because of the bigger wires. And so, you know, there is a little bit of sort of extra hardware cost that the electricians would have to install it. But at the end of the day, the, the labor to do so, all the all the tasks are about the same. Um, so that's that's those two. For the last one, the, if, if we're kind of going for the most expensive generator option, the 48 kilowatt, uh, there's again, maybe the wires are gonna be a little bit bigger, but it's not that much of a difference. So I'm just gonna kind of estimate a little bit and say that uh, maybe it's about $800 more. So that one would be equaling this one uh, plus 800. All right, so by now you're thinking, boy, this stuff is expensive. Let's get to that last line item and talk about how we can save some money. Unfortunately, I have some bad news for you. If we go back to the quotes we got from the electricians and we zoom in on the one that we did, so this one on the right is what we actually had installed. There's these items on the bottom here for uh, optional, but in our case, this work wasn't really optional. We had to do it ourselves. So the first one, the underground fuel supply line, this is essentially the pipe that goes from the propane tank to the generator. This is a little bit that goes uh, underground. There's a couple risers. The material itself isn't that expensive, so we went ahead and did that part ourselves. The second item is the concrete base or basically a pad for the generators to sit on. Since we were installing all this on a slope, we definitely needed it. Uh, in some cases you might not, but we did. Uh, and this one we did ourselves as well because since we had the propane tank, we were gonna need a concrete pad for that one. So as long as we're doing both and ordering concrete, uh, sorry, as long as we're doing the propane tank, oh, we might as well do both. So, so the, we had some leftover materials we were able to use for that. So. Uh, it was a few hundred dollars in concrete, I suppose, uh, but in any case, it was quite a bit cheaper to do that ourselves compared to the 1800 that the electricians would have charged us. So going back to the installation costs for the one we did, we really kind of have to say, well, it would have been an extra, uh, an extra 650 for that fuel line plus 1800 for the uh, concrete pad. So now the installation for our generator would have actually been closer to 9,000 had we had the electricians do everything. The savings that we got in that one is really just the sum of those two. So if we say, okay, that would have been um, minus 1,800, uh, minus the 650, then we saved about 2,450, like I said, give or take a few hundred dollars for the materials that we actually had to buy. So that line, uh, column C should total up if I added it all those together, that, that would be the total that we ended up paying. So we're kind of adding it to the installation and taking it back out really just to illustrate that that is the actual cost on line four, about 9,000, but you can save uh, maybe a couple thousand dollars by doing some things yourself. All right, if you want still more details about generator installation costs, I was thinking we could crowdsource this from those of you watching this video that have had one quoted or installed yourself. So go down to the bottom, leave a comment with a few details. For example, ours was installed in California in 2021. It was 38 kilowatts, uh, 1800 RPM, and uh, the installation cost was 21,000. So I'll curate these comments so that hopefully it'll just be a nice list of uh, generator installation costs and it will be uh, something everybody can reference. Okay, stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to be doing a similar analysis and deconstructing the cost of our solar installation. It's going to be have four elements to look at again. The first thing is going to be the rack mount hardware that we use to install it on the roof, the photovoltaic panels themselves, the microinverters, and spoiler alert, there's going to be some significant DIY savings to share on that one. So we'll see you next time.